Racism has rightly been called America's original sin. It remains a blot on our national life and continues to cause acts and attitudes of hatred, as recent events have made evident. The need to condemn and combat the demonic ideologies of white supremacy, neo-Nazism, and racism has become especially urgent at this time. Our efforts must be constantly led and accompanied by prayer, but they must also include concrete action. People of faith call on the divine physician, Christ the Lord, to heal the wounds of racism throughout our land. And let's gather in our celebration in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Wake me up, Lord, so that the evil of racism finds no home within me. Keep watch over my heart, Lord, and remove from me any barriers to your grace that may oppress and offend my brothers and sisters. Fill my spirit, Lord, so that I may give services of justice and peace. Clear my mind, Lord, and use it for your glory. And finally, remind us, Lord, that you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Amen. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. A scholar of the law stood up to test Jesus. He said to him, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said, and who is my neighbor? Jesus said to him, a man fell victim to robbers as he was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him beat him, and left him half dead on the road. A priest came upon that place, and when he saw him, he crossed over to the other side and passed him by. Likewise, a Levite came upon that road, and when he saw him, he too crossed over to the other side and passed him by. But a Samaritan traveler saw him and was moved with compassion. He poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. He lifted him up and put him on his animal and took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day he took two gold coins and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Jesus said, which of these three in your opinion was neighbor to the robber's victim. He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About a week and a half ago, Father Steve Kanonik and the staff of St. Benedict's Catholic Church in Chicago reached out to me and requested that I contribute to today's prayer service. I'm speaking to you as a committed parishioner, one with a Master's of Divinity from McCormick Theological Seminary, as a minister of music, 
a team member for the RCIA program, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, and the head of the missions committee at St. Ben's. I'm also speaking to you as a former criminal defense attorney, an army veteran, and a convert to Catholicism since 2016. Finally, I'm speaking to you, my viewer and listening partner for the next few minutes, with such good will that it would defy, such good will for humanity that it would defy your imagination. So I invite you to listen and participate with me from the possibility of a future that is emerging in our hearts and minds of a world where love and justice prevail. Right now, the rate of change in today's current news cycles seems to update itself every 24 to 48 hours in the aftermath of George Floyd's death. On Monday, June 8th, Steve Karnowski wrote an, an Associated Press news article which states, George Floyd was an unarmed black man who died as a result of being pinned down by a white police officer in Minneapolis on May 25th, 2020. The police officer pressed his knee into George Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes after Floyd stopped moving and, and pleading for air. His death set off protests, some violent, in Minneapolis that swiftly spread to cities all across the US and around the globe. At first, one officer, Derek Chauvin, was charged. Then the other three officers were charged, Jay Koenig, Thomas Lane, and Tal Theo. The report continues. Floyd's death has ignited calls to reform the Minneapolis Police Department, which community activists have long accused of entrenched racial discrimination and brutality. A majority of Minneapolis City Council members said Sunday that they favor disbanding the department entirely, though they have yet to offer concrete plans for what will replace it. The state last week launched a civil rights investigation of the department. On Friday, the council approved a stipulated agreement that immediately banned the use of chokeholds and neck restraints and included several other changes. That investigation is ongoing. Now addressing you about what is possible during this time goes beyond rooting myself in the details of the moment or naming names of the, of the day and far beyond that to a place in our society where there is no agreement. What do I mean when I say there is no agreement? To illustrate, just consider the many platforms we have available to us in social media, for example. We can follow those we like, unfriend those we don't, watch TV, movies, streaming services that appeal to our interests. We can ignore certain news outlets and boycott commentators that we believe are bigoted or biased. We can tune into programs, read books, magazines, newspapers that support our view of the world and shape our beliefs. Some of us opt out of the whole information and meaning-making enterprise altogether and refuse to support any of it. Each of us lives in the realm of no agreement and we find ways to cope with it. The realm of no agreement finds some of us anxious, fearful, or even depressed. Some grow skeptical or even cynical about the possibility of getting to agreement or getting the yes, while others remain optimistic, hopeful, and open, searching for commonalities and answers that we can all live with. 
I am one of those who believe that we can find common ground or reach agreement on what needs to be done today and in the years ahead. I am a stand for racial justice in all its myriad forms and institutions where justice has been missing. In the economic arena, housing, education, health, voting, and especially in the criminal justice system with its massive incarceration of black and brown people. I take my stand in the face of no agreement, however, not defined by my view of the scope of the problem or in pointing the finger of blame to certain individuals or groups or even with calling out historically problematic states of minds that are racist. My stand is, in fact, a participation in something that has been fundamentally missing. I declare that the world is ready for transformation. We're on our way to reaching critical mass as is being demonstrated by people, the countless number of people uniting in protest all over the world. We don't ever want to forget George Floyd or the long list of men and women who have died as a result of police brutality, acts of hatred or fear. I will offer one way that we can make this worldwide movement into something that is sustainable. What has been missing is speaking something new a type of speech that takes us outside of ourselves to places that we otherwise wouldn't go. A type of speaking which shapes our listening of black people from what they're up to, not from who they have been or haven't been. A type of speaking that does not organize people by the complaints that they have, or that defines me as not that person that I'm complaining about. You see, there's a catch to complaints about racial injustice. When one complains, there is something that is dearly important behind the complaint, that which stays unfulfilled and in the background. What is missing? What can bring about the fulfillment of justice that we're so committed to? We can bring generative speaking to the network of communications and conversations that billions of, of us humans on the planet are having with each other. Generative speaking is a concept taught at Landmark Worldwide, so I credit them for inventing it. It's a type of speaking that invites us to make bold and audacious requests of each other so that what is possible can be brought out into the open. Generative language patterns produce the existence of that which was not possible before to produce results. When we engage in generative speaking, by making promises and enrolling other people to step into a bold future that wasn't going to happen anyway, we're speaking newly. Imagine the impact of millions of conversations about racial justice and people trying out new practices of listening and speaking to the experience of experiences of black and brown people and listening for new possibilities that open up for our brothers and sisters who are oppressed. Imagine the reach of new modes of sharing and communications as they begin to inform and reshape our corporations, 
governments, and economic policies, all the way up from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom. If we listened to what wasn't working, not as a problem, but as, a, as an opportunity for discovery, exploration, contribution, we could hear more and heal more. As an emerging global commitment, we could invent new forms and avenues of cooperation between the individual and the powerful groups that steer public opinion. Imagine a world where the common welfare and dignity of historically ignored communities are promoted as a public good and tangible resources supplied to uplift each member in mass. Let's start together at St. Ben's. As the people of God, the body of Christ, each of us can generate new speaking to the network of conversations that we have with people of color with the intent to bring our commitment to justice out from the background. Jesus Christ initiated this inquiry in the parable of the Good Samaritan when he asked, who is my neighbor? Let's set out to discover and explore who is my neighbor. From the timeless and eternal perspectives of faith, hope, and love, each of us stands to gain as we take on Jesus' inquiry, who is my neighbor? It implies new actions to take and new words to be spoken to our sisters and brothers. Pursuing this line of inquiry helps us to develop new capacities in our spiritual growth and development. And it means that old barriers to walking in our neighbor's shoes can be dismantled. Right now, if you're opening up to the possibility for individual and collective justice, if, if you can see yourself as an agent for transformation, I ask, who could you make a difference for in the matter of racial justice? Whether you know the person by sight, by name, or by circumstance, where is the spirit leading you? Now, for those whose immediate thoughts arise, I can't. I couldn't. Collins, I'm just not that kind of person. It's too risky for me. Or what would other people think? I don't want to alienate or offend or even look stupid in front of people of color. Notice that conversation and realize that that's your inner voice. That's what's play, taking place inside your head. I ask, who can hear your inner voice out here where words and actions manifest your commitment? certainly not your neighbor. So I invite you to listen again, more closely this time, to Christ's words than you're listening to your own inner voice as he asks us again, who is my neighbor? I invite you to be a stand, a force for good, triumph, over your inner voice and say something new. Some dialogues will empower and uplift. Other dialogues will create a space where there's a lot of freedom for us to show up and learn from each other. Together, we can say something new and create a world where love and justice flow like a mighty river and justice prevails. Say something new.
conscience is the core and sanctuary within us where we are alone with God and hear his call to love good and avoid evil. And do this, shun that. Let us examine our conscience in light of the sin of racism, asking ourselves these questions. Have I fully loved God and fully loved my neighbor as myself? Have I caused pain to others by my actions or my words? Have I offended my brother or my sister? Have I done enough to inform myself about the sin of racism, its roots, and its historical and contemporary manifestations? Have I opened my heart to see how unequal access to economic opportunity, jobs, housing, and education on the basis of skin color, race, or ethnicity has denied and continues to deny the equal dignity of others? Is there a root of racism within me that blurs my vision of who my neighbor is? Have I ever witnessed an occasion when someone fell victim to personal, institutional, systemic, or social racism, and I did or said nothing, leaving the victim to address their pain alone? Have I ever witnessed an occasion when someone fell victim to personal, institutional, systemic, or social racism with me inflicting the pain, acting opposite of love of God and love of neighbor? Have I ever lifted up and aided a person who fell victim to personal, institutional, systemic, or social racism and paid a price for extending mercy to the other? How did I react? Did my faith grow? Am I willing to grow even more in faith through my actions? I recognize that racism manifests in my own individual thoughts, attitudes, actions, and inactions. It also manifests in social structures and unjust systems that perpetuate centuries of racial injustice. For my individual actions and my participation in unjust structures, I seek forgiveness and move toward reconciliation. I look into my heart and ask for the will and the strength to help contribute to the healing of racism in my time. Let us pray the act of contrition. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offended my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. During these difficult times, let us bring to God our prayers of peace as we await the fulfillment of God's promise. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, that we may celebrate and welcome the diverse faces of Christ in our community, our worship, our ministries, and our leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may work to end the violence perpetrated by verbal attacks, deadly weapons, and cold indifference. May our nation and countries around the world become havens of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may receive the grace to see every human being as a child of God, regardless of race, language, or culture. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for parents and educators that we may teach our children how to resolve differences nonviolently and respectfully and have the courage to model it in our own behavior. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Benedict community of faith, that we may hear the call of our church leaders in the pastoral letter against racism to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to act together to end violence and racism. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our public officials, that the spirit of wisdom may help them to strive to work for equal education, suitable housing, and equal employment opportunities for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For solidarity in our global human family, that we may be vigilant in our protection of those who are most vulnerable and most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have died in the pursuit of justice, may they be welcomed in the great glory of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, whose promise of justice sustains us, hear our prayers that we might open our hearts and our communities to Christ, our example in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. God of heaven and earth, you created the one human family, and you endowed each person with great dignity. Aid us, we pray, in overcoming the sin of racism. Grant us your grace in eliminating this blight from our hearts, our communities, our social and civil institutions. Fill our hearts with love for you and our neighbor so that we may work with you in healing our land from racial injustice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Well, we have prayed now with changed hearts. Let us move our feet to action. Mm -hmm. 